What first got you interested in politics? Uh, going to our family gatherings at Aunt Edie's on the uh, East River there. I don't know if you remember that area, yeah. um, Spite and Dival area. We used to go there for every um, New Year's Eve and with six uncles, mom, dad, and all the wives and girlfriends, uh, you know, as, as the years went on, the girlfriends became wives. They always were in political discussions. And I don't want to use the word argument because it would, might be misinterpreted today, but they were political arguments that were the kind that I think we want to do more of at Hands On Politics, which is stating your position, backing it up with why you believe that, and then also accepting what other people um, believe. And, you know, a lot of us have the same goals, just different paths to get there. So ever, I loved those arguments. I loved watching. I, I loved learning. I loved seeing how you could argue and, and then everybody hugs and does it again next time they get together. So that that was the kind of seedling for me. How would you describe yourself politically? A constitutionalist. When people try to write off anything I talk about as you're a Republican, I say, ah, no, no, I'm a constitutionalist. And I believe in human behavior and I believe that we need to create policies based on human behavior. And I think that's what the Constitution is built on. The Constitution was built on human behavior and how people react to things and how people uh, handle leadership and how people quickly can become emboldened with power and the constitution uh, keeps that at bay so politically. But I, I am open to all arguments. I love anybody that has a different opinion of mine. Give me your position. I want to hear it. I'm not going to knock it down, but I'm going to challenge it. And just like you challenge me, I love being challenged. <laughs> How would you describe the U.S. Constitution? It is the foundation, foundational principle that has made this country the greatest country in the world. And it is the reason that everybody wants to migrate here. Everybody wants to be here. Everybody wants to be like the United States because of the Constitution, because the Constitution, it basically emboldens the individual spirit. It, it harnesses the individual desire to do good for themselves, which then spills over into doing good for others. Because if you go through the hierarchy of needs, once those basic needs are fulfilled, we can start to become more philanthropic with our, not only our money, but our time. This constitution has given people the opportunity to create their own job, to create their own wealth, to create their own services to give to others. It, the Constitution is the reason. It keeps people who would like to control power at bay. It gives us our power to be who we want. To be. How would you describe the United States to a minority who maybe has been told that the United States isn't fair to everyone? I would ask them to read the documents, especially the Declaration of Independence. We believe these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. That was put in there for a reason. It was put in there not for particularly just that time, but for future generations to utilize to say if there was discrimination and there was that slavery was a stain on our nation, it was a stain on the world because it was a worldwide phenomenon. The, the declaration gave the put the world on notice and said, we believe every human being is equal and that every human being has the should have the opportunity to be the best that they can be. And no matter what the context of the time was, if you read about the founders, there were many of the founders, including Thomas Jefferson, who owned slaves, and many of them did, because if we put it in context, that was part of the economy. But they believed in their writings that this was the foundation to set slavery, to, to abolish slavery at some point. 
And eventually that happened. And without the Constitution, without the Declaration, that could not be done. I would ask them to put things in context. When when you hear that the people that wrote the Constitution had slaves, you could look at the entire world and say many people in the world had slaves. That was a stain on the world. And it was not just an American problem. It was a worldwide problem. But because of that Constitution, it had has created the best opportunity, no matter what your background, no matter what your race, creed, religion, sexual orientation, it doesn't matter. The Constitution's words right now protect you to give you the opportunity to be who you want to be. Tell me the difference between a republic and a democracy. A democracy is where the majority rules. Simple as that. If you can get one more person than the other side to implement a a policy, that's how it's done. And a republic protects the rights of all of the people being represented. It's too complex to go through in this short interview, but think of it as protecting the minority. It gives everybody a seat at the table as opposed to getting a group together to vote against another group. It disperses the people who vote and they have to work harder to convince people that it's a good idea. So it protects minority rights. the original 10 amendments those were those were argued that they weren't needed because based on the way they were designing the government these were assumed rights when you read the declaration these were assumed by the people that were writing freedom of speech, freedom to assemble, freedom from a government religion, those were all assumed, thank goodness, the arguments to say, well, let's just make sure they understand these 10 things, because these are really foundationally important Mm -hmm. beyond what we've said in the Constitution. So these are kind of insurance policies. And and thankfully, I'm not a big fan of insurance, but that was a, a really good insurance policy those 10 amendments. And the 10th amendment was basically to say, hey, we don't believe in a a monarchy or a centralized government. We want you to know that anything that's not agreed to that the national government should be doing in the constitution is reserved for the states. The states decide, decide their fate. And in turn, that means the people decide their fate. So so the power structure was upside down. It was for the first time in human history, it was the people that decided how they were going to govern themselves. And the state was the next mechanism, your local to your state. Those were seen as the most important governance because they were close to the people. The national government had very, very limited enumerated rights and to do what they do. And there are, those are the things that are outlined in the Constitution. What is the role of the judicial branch? Walter Williams was one of my favorite economists, political analysts. And he used to say the Constitution was the rules of the game. Okay, so if you're playing poker, would you play poker with somebody if the rules could constantly change? So think of the Constitution as the rules of the game. The Supreme Court and the legislative branch was the was the group that said if somebody disagreed on what the rules were, the Supreme Court would come in and say, well, let's read the rules. Here are the rules of the game. Here's how we play poker. What you just did is not in the rules, so you can't do that. So basically, judicial branch, their only real role is to say whether something is in bounds or out of bounds. <laughs> If you could change one thing about America, what would it be? And if there was one thing you would make sure could never be changed about America, what would it be? If Mm -hmm. if there was one thing I could change in the Constitution would be that the rules that the congressional members go by 
were more defined so that they did not favor the parties in power. They represented the entire uh, congressional body. So, so what I mean by that is right now, when the Democrats control Congress and when the Republicans control Congress, they run all the committees. They decide what legislation comes to the floor. They decide all of the things that happen during that time in Congress. I think that has been poisoned because we now have new representatives that come in from whatever party. And if my representative is new, they do not have the same power as the party in power who has been there for 30 years. So I would have put something in the Constitution of how that mechanism would have worked and probably term limits might have fixed that as well as I'm thinking it through. If you could ensure that one thing wasn't changed, what would it be? The Constitution in general, but the Electoral College is the one thing that's being targeted right now that I would be very disappointed if that was changed because it would change the entire dynamic of our nation, of our political system, of everything. The minority would no longer be protected. It would change our system to almost being a democracy in one fell swoop. Okay, final question. What do you want people to get from hands-on politics? I want them to get a place where they can come and engage if, if they want to engage. I would love for them to send us in topics that they want to hear us talk about because I think we come from a very frontline perspective, for lack of a better term. We live in the system. We're not part of the party. We're not elected officials. We're not bureaucrats. We're people that have worked in the capitalist system. We've created our own economies within our families and our, our lifetime. And I think we will bring the perspective of what it takes to make it in America and to kind of get rid of the myths that we're starting to hear about how unfair we are, how much race has come back into the, I thought we had really done a fabulous job of giving opportunity to everyone. And all of a sudden it's seems with advent of social media and lately it seems like all we hear about is how people can't make it in this country because of some attribute of their physical body. I don't get that. So I want to help people understand that what they're being told actually is just a mindset. It's not a reality. It's far from reality. If you want to make it anywhere in this world, this is the place to do it here in America. And we want to do our best to make the arguments that help you as a listener be inspired to go do what you feel your purpose in this life is. So that's what we're here to help you do. Have a little fun on the way. Uh, talk about the topics of the day without the name calling, that kind of stuff. We'll leave that for the cable network. Works and, and we're going to hopefully get down to the real issues that we can all agree on. I think we agree with much more than we disagree here in the uh, United States. Mm -hmm.